when it comes to healing, putting a label on yourself is one of the most detrimental things that you can do. Um, this isn't something most people would admit, but we actually, we get attention with a disease, okay, with a diagnosis, with a label. We actually get attention for it. And this, this little shadow value that gets met, um, one is we get validation, two is we get acknowledgement, three, we get attention. Right? This is crazy. I know how this sounds, but how do I know? Because I felt this. I felt this when I was in ICU, wrapped up in bandages for years and years through all my surgeries. I felt that shadow value. So you form a label out of your diagnosis, then it becomes extremely hard to disidentify from that label. Okay, when we're getting a need met, let's remember 95% of mental illness is, is reactionary. You react to your environment. You're reacting to your psychological and emotional needs not being met. 95% of mental illness. Okay, so it's very important to not let the mind create a label, to create a personality of a sick person. Because the fastest way to heal yourself is to take your attention off it. Every time you reaffirm that state, every time you reaffirm the never diagnosis, the brain fires a set of electrochemical signals and forms neural nets in your brain. So anatomically, your brain structurally looks like that person with the disease. Okay, then the brain can fire that story, fire that state of mind easier and easier and easier, and the brain is signaling the body. This is epigenetics. This is psychoneuroimmunology. Your brain, neurotransmitters for the brain, and then neuropeptides are the link that signal your body. And you switch on those same hormonal sensors. You switch on that stress response, the fear. The doctor said never. The doctor said never. You move into fear, and you keep the same genes on in the same way. And if nothing changes, then you're heading for a genetic destiny. And that's ill health, disease, not healing, or even worse, okay? So the fastest way to heal is to take your awareness off it, literally. I know it sounds crazy, but obviously what we do in the West isn't working. Obviously, Western allopathic medicine is a huge killer. Don't get angry at me. This is it published data. This is in the... Journal of American Medical Association by doctors themselves. It's by conservative estimates, it's the third leading cause of death. They're called iatrogenic causes. You go to see your doctor with a symptom, symptom A, but you die from symptom B, C, D, E, and F that arise from Western allopathic intervention. Okay, misdiagnosis, pharmaceutical drugs they put you on, the surgery you had, side effects from these poisons that are being put into your body and the person dies. So obviously we are missing a big part of the picture here when it comes to health and healing because there's no way a modality that is the pinnacle, okay, the, pin the elite, the standard, right, the paradigmatic belief we have about Western medicine, if that was true, it could not be the third leading cause of death. I'm telling you, when you put your consciousness on a problem and you keep firing the same nerves in your brain and feeling the same emotion, it's a record of the past. It's a record of when the doctor said, never. It can't be cured. There's nothing in medicine that we can do for your brain, your body, your immune system, etc then you will keep the same gene switched on in the same way and head towards that genetic destiny. And it could be pretty bleak. So the key is to understand that we're all trying to get our needs met. It's just being a human being, right? We've all got psychological and emotional needs. We all want to be accepted, right? Even the big macho man who pretends he's limitless or the whatever archetype you want to look at. Um, it's a base fundamental parts of the human psyche. And so I had to acknowledge inside myself when I was in hospital that there was this guilty little pleasure that I was like, man, people are showing me love now. Or this validates that. Or, you know, 
But this, because of that, is a favorite of the ego, okay, of the mind, the egoic mind. It loves to, to do that linking exercise. But if you are facing health concerns right now, I highly recommend that you learn to meditate, that you take time out every single day just for you to be alone, to move your brain out of high beta, brainwave activity, six to ten minutes and you're going to drop back into alpha, restorative alpha brainwave activity, lower cortisol in your body, allow the body to move into homeostasis. I suggest that you process and move emotion, suppressed emotion that you're hanging on to, take part in things that you love, share your gift, your light, your love, your family, your friends, in healthy ways, authentic, congruent ways to get your needs met. Look at your diet, okay, and get rid of toxic relationships. If you're in one right now and it's toxic, if you can't get it locked and changed, by 4 p.m. tomorrow, I want you out. I want you out. We're in it for the kids. We're in it for the kids. No, no. Kids growing up in a toxic environment is going to affect them even more than two adults being adults and admitting they've got to go separate ways. Okay? So you've got to look at the whole part that makes up your life. Dietary, emotional, psychological, nutritional, spiritual, if you want to understand healing. But I can tell you this, if you move into fear when you get that never diagnosis and you form an identity out of it, then you will head towards the genetic destiny, okay? But you have the power to break that by taking different actions, different choices, beliefs, thoughts, and emotional states. You switch on what, what's known as behavioral dependent genes, behavioral state genes epigenetically, and genes both proteins, proteins are the building blocks of you and me, the expression of life is the moving shape of proteins. So mind over matter is a reality. Um, and you have this power within you, but you've got to make different choices. You've got to have a good, long, hard look at your life, take responsibility, put your hand up, and realize that charity starts at home. You've got to give to yourself. You've got to go and give to yourself before you can give to anyone else. Okay, some, some me time for you to get this sorted. And then you can come out the other side, whether it's mental health issues or you've got you know immune problems going on right now, digestive issues, whatever. Doctors aren't God. No doctor can tell you what your body is capable of. It's as simple as that, guys. So from my heart to yours. Sending you light, sending you love. If you want to get me on a podcast, interview, YouTube, coaching, one on one, um, my music or my books, go to damienhorton.com. Peace. <laughs>